In the mid 19th century, a storm was brewing in the United States. The nation, young and vibrant, found itself divided, split down the middle by conflicting economies, contrasting ideologies, and a contentious debate around the institution of slavery. The industrialized North, with its bustling factories and growing cities, stood in stark contrast to the agrarian South, whose economy relied heavily on slave labor. Tensions were palpable, like a tightrope stretched to its limit. The country's leaders grappled to maintain the fragile peace, crafting political compromises in a desperate attempt to bridge the widening chasm. The Missouri Compromise and the Compromise of 1850 were such attempts, band-aid solutions designed to appease both sides of the divide, but these were merely stopgap measures, temporary solutions that did little to address the root of the discord. The storm continued to gather strength, the winds of war growing stronger with each passing day. However, these compromises only served to delay the inevitable conflict, setting the stage for the Civil War. The election of Abraham Lincoln in 1860 was the spark that ignited the Civil War. This momentous event sent shockwaves throughout the nation, particularly in the southern states. For them, Lincoln's election symbolized a direct threat to their way of life and economic foundations, which were deeply intertwined with the institution of slavery. Reacting to this perceived threat, Seven southern states, including South Carolina, Mississippi, Florida, Alabama, Georgia, Louisiana and Texas, decided to sever their ties with the Union. It was a bold, unprecedented move, a clear manifestation of their profound discontent. These states banded together forming a new political entity, the Confederate States of America. This act of secession however was seen as illegitimate by the North and the federal government. Tensions between the North and the South were already at a boiling point and it only took a single event to push the nation into a full-blown war. That event came in the form of the attack on Fort Sumter in April 1861. Located in South Carolina, Fort Sumter was a symbol of federal authority. The Confederate forces aiming to assert their sovereignty bombarded the fort for an entire day. The Union soldiers stationed there outnumbered and outgunned were eventually forced to surrender. This attack on Fort Sumter was more than just a military action, it was a statement a declaration that the Confederacy was willing to defend its autonomy with force if necessary. It was a message to the federal government and the northern states that the South was not backing down, that it was prepared to fight for its rights and its way of life. For the United States this was a moment of deep division, a time when brother turned against brother, when the bonds that held the nation together were stretched to their breaking point. It was a time of uncertainty, fear, and grief. But it was also a time when the nation was forced to confront the contradictions that had been simmering beneath the surface of its society for decades. With the first shots fired at Fort Sumter, the Civil War had officially begun. The nation was about to be plunged into a bloody and devastating conflict that would test its endurance, its values, and its very identity. The early years of the war saw a series of victories and defeats for both sides. As the American Civil War roared into life, the first significant clash came at the First Battle of Bull Run. The Confederates, under the command of General Beauregard, squared off against the Union's McDowell in Virginia. The Greenhorn Union troops, initially confident, soon found themselves outmatched and outmaneuvered. The Confederates claimed victory and it was a harsh awakening for the North, a clear indication that this war wouldn't be a swift or easy affair. Meanwhile in the Western Theater, Ulysses S. Grant was making a name for himself. At Fort Donelson Grant's tenacity won the day, securing a vital strategic point and opening up Tennessee for a Union advance. His demand for unconditional surrender from the Confederate forces was a stark message. The Union was prepared to fight tooth and nail. The bloodiest single day of the war however came at the Battle of Antietam. Here, Robert E. Lee's first invasion of the North was met by George McClellan's Army of the Potomac. The battle was brutal and the losses were staggering on both sides. Yet it was this battle that gave President Lincoln the opportunity he had been waiting for. In 1862, the Emancipation Proclamation was introduced. This document, a war measure by Lincoln, declared that all enslaved people in the Confederate-held territory were to be set free. This was a crucial move, one that fundamentally shifted the war's nature. No longer was the war just about preserving the Union, it had become a battle for human freedom. However, even with these notable events and battles the war was far from decided. Both sides had their share of victories and defeats. The Union had more resources but the Confederates were defending their homeland, fighting with a fierce determination. 
The war was a brutal chess match, with both sides constantly adjusting their strategies and tactics. By the end of 1862, neither side had gained a clear advantage, but the war was about to take a decisive turn. The Battle of Gettysburg in July 1863 marked a turning point in the Civil War. For three grueling days, the Union and Confederate forces clashed in what would become the war's most brutal battle, with casualties reaching into the tens of thousands on both sides. But when the smoke cleared, it was the Union Army who stood victorious. This was not just a victory, it was a turning point. Gettysburg was a defining moment, not only in the course of the war, but also in the very fabric of our nation. It was here that the Union's Army of the Potomac finally halted the Confederates' northern advance, breaking their invincible aura. The battle shook the Confederacy to its core, depriving it of much-needed momentum and marking the beginning of a series of Union victories. But the significance of Gettysburg extended beyond the battlefield. Four months later in November 1863, President Abraham Lincoln delivered one of history's most memorable speeches, the Gettysburg Address. In just over two minutes, Lincoln eloquently honored the fallen soldiers and redefined the purpose of the war. He spoke of a new birth of freedom, transforming the war from a battle for the Union into a fight for human liberty. The Gettysburg Address also served as a call to action, reminding the nation of the principles upon which it was founded, principles of freedom and equality. It was a message that resonated deeply within the hearts of the Union soldiers, giving them a renewed sense of purpose and a clear vision of what they were fighting for. In the aftermath of Gettysburg, the Union's morale was boosted. They had proven that they could not only stand against the Confederacy, but also turn the tide of war. Their victory at Gettysburg was a catalyst, sparking a shift in momentum that would carry them through the remaining years of the war. And so, with the echo of Lincoln's words still lingering in the air and the memory of Gettysburg fresh in their minds, the Union forces pressed on. They had weathered the storm and emerged stronger. With the tide of war turning, the Union was now on the offensive. The year 1865 brought the end of the Civil War. As the sun rose on the year, the war was entering its final stages. One of the most significant of these was the Siege of Petersburg in Virginia, a strategic battle that lasted an intense nine months. Union forces under the command of Ulysses S. Grant aimed to cut off Confederate supply lines into Petersburg, a crucial rail hub. The Siege of Petersburg was a grueling test of endurance, with both sides suffering heavy casualties before the Confederate forces were finally driven out. The fall of Petersburg was swiftly followed by the capture of Richmond, the capital of the Confederacy. The loss of these two critical strongholds marked the beginning of the end for the Confederate forces. The Union victory was now in sight. In the following days, the defeat of the Confederacy became inevitable. On April 9th, General Robert E. Lee, commander of the Confederate Army, surrendered to General Grant at the Appomattox Courthouse. This was a major turning point, signaling the end of the Southern states' resistance. The war that had torn the United States apart for four long years was finally over. However, the joy of victory was short-lived. Just five days after Lee's surrender, President Abraham Lincoln was assassinated. Lincoln, who had led the nation through its darkest hour, was shot at Ford's Theater in Washington, D.C., plunging the nation back into shock and mourning. His death was a tragic coda to the brutal war, and it marked the beginning of a new uncertain era for the United States. With Lee's surrender, the Civil War had come to an end, but the nation faced an uncertain future. The battles had ended, but the task of healing the deep wounds inflicted by the war was just beginning. The United States was about to embark on a long journey of reconciliation and reconstruction, striving to rebuild and reunite a nation torn apart by conflict. The end of the Civil War marked the beginning of a long and difficult period of reconstruction. The nation was left to grapple with the bitter aftermath of a war that had torn it apart, and the task at hand was monumental. The Reconstruction era was a time of immense struggle. Politically, the once united country had to find a way to reintegrate the seceded southern states back into the Union. This was no small task, as the ideological chasm between the North and South remained wide and deep. The South, devastated by the war, faced severe economic hardship. The infrastructure was in ruins, the labor force was in disarray with the abolition of slavery, and the economy was in shambles. Socially, the challenges were equally daunting. The abolition of slavery was a monumental step forward, but it was just the beginning. 
the newly freed African Americans now had to navigate a society that was far from accepting. They faced discrimination, violence, and a lack of basic civil rights. Despite these obstacles, they persevered, carving out a place for themselves in society and contributing significantly to the cultural and economic fabric of the nation. The war had a lasting impact, forever changing the political landscape of the country. It brought about the 14th and 15th Amendments, granting citizenship and voting rights to African Americans respectively. These were significant strides towards equality, marking a pivotal shift in the nation's trajectory. The aftermath of the Civil War also sparked the rise of new political and social movements. Women's suffrage gained momentum, labor rights became a focal point, and the seeds of the Civil Rights Movement were sown. The war, while devastating, was a catalyst for change, driving the nation towards progress and reform. The Civil War left an indelible mark on the nation, shaping the United States as we know it today. It was a time of turmoil and transformation, a period that tested the resilience of the American spirit and ultimately led to a more inclusive and equitable society. The American Civil War, a pivotal event in the nation's history, was a complex and multifaceted conflict. From the causes that ignited the war, to the battles that defined its course, and finally to its aftermath and lasting legacy, every facet of this war has left an indelible mark on the American psyche. The war began with a clash of ideologies, the North's pursuit of a united nation, and the abolition of slavery against the South's defense of states' rights and their slave-based economy. This ideological rift led to the first sparks of conflict, setting the stage for a war that would last four grueling years. The early years of the war saw both sides embroiled in a series of intense battles. From the First Battle of Bull Run to the Battle of Antietam, these early encounters set the tone for the fierce struggle that lay ahead. It was a war not just of armies, but also of strategies and tactics, of leaders and soldiers, each playing their part in this grand drama of conflict and resolution. The turning point came with the Battle of Gettysburg, a monumental clash that marked a shift in momentum towards the Union. It was a testament to the resilience of the human spirit, to the determination to fight for a cause one believes in. The war ended with the surrender at Appomattox, but the scars it left were deep and long-lasting. The aftermath saw the country grappling with the harsh realities of Reconstruction and the challenge of reconciling a divided nation. The legacy of the Civil War is still evident today, in the struggle for racial equality and the ongoing debate over states' rights. As we reflect on the Civil War, we remember not only the battles fought, but also the ideals and principles that defined a nation. It was a war that tested the very fabric of American society, a war that ultimately shaped the nation we know today.